let's take our Bibles and if we could turn to the uh, Gospel of Luke in chapters number 13, Luke's Gospel, chapters numbers 13. And that takes here, I remember at the end of the year, last year, uh, we were preparing for, I think you call it a watch night service over here in America, you know. Um, I don't know if you have a different name in Kentucky, but I guess I see everybody shake their head, so I guess it's a, it's a watch night service up here too, all right? <laughs> and so, but we, we call it Olia's night service back in Grenada. And, um, you know, I was looking to preach and trying to prepare something to preach, and I come to this text here from verse number six. And um, in verse number six, he says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and found none. Cut it down. Why cumbered it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it be a fruit, well. And if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we pray God you bless your word to our hearts. And Father, we just want to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. And Lord, I just want to exalt your name. And I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And Lord, may you minister, Lord, may your word, O oh God, reach to our hearts, and may Jesus be exalted yes. here tonight. May he be lifted up. We thank you, and we honor you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, our text does provide some information surrounding agriculture as Jesus speaks this parable. And, of course, in many times he use uh, uh, you know agricultural things to be able to bring across some of his you know some of his points or some of his parables and of course they make perfect sense amen and uh, in this case here too it does make perfect sense as he speak the parable about this fig tree that is planted in this vineyard and the bible says here that this the owner of the property comes seeking fruit from this particular fig tree. He says from this yeah. fig tree. Not another, but he says from this fig tree. Right. And he said, I found none. For these past three years, I come seeking fruit, and I sought fruits, and I found none. Right. So he spent year after year after year, three years, looking for fruit. Yeah. And he found none. I believe he probably wanted to taste and to see, well, how good that particular right fig tree how good that the, the fruit on that tree is tasting and uh, he probably tasted on several others but he probably some for some reason had a real interest in this particular fig tree now if we would put things into perspective and we look at it from the standpoint of types and we would we would say that the owner of the property gives us a type of god the father yeah. amen yeah. It gives us a, a type of God the Father. The dresser of the vineyard gives us a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The vineyard gives us a type of the church. And the fig tree gives us a type of the Christian. And so if the fig tree is a type of the Christian, and the owner comes seeking fruit from that fig tree, I believe if we put things into perspective, I would imagine that year after year after year, God has come looking over individuals at Emmanuel's Baptist Church, looking to see how productive they were for the past years, or for the past year. Unfortunately, in this case, this particular fig tree did not bear for three years. Right. It bear nothing. It produced no fruit right. whatsoever. Right. Now if God were to come down and he looks upon us here tonight, 
would it be the same narrative as how the as how the owner of the properties come if he comes and he comes and looking in our individual's life will he find fruit will he find fruit in our lives can we look back for the past year and say yes I have been productive you say well I don't want to say that I'm going be boasting but I see the apostle Paul make that grand boast and said I have fought a good fight yes. and if you as a Christian if you and I as a Christian have lived a good life I believe that we would be able to stand and say we lived a good life yeah. without trying to be boastful or anything as like that as a matter of fact the psalmist says let your boast be in the Lord amen yes. and so when we boast we boast about things about God so this owner come and he found none for three years is God finding fruit in our lives huh if we are fig trees uh, has he found any fruit for the past year are we in a position right now that we for the next year we're going to bear fruits are we going to be a fruit? Are we in a fruit bearing mood? Or in a fruit bearing stage? In a fruit bearing, we walk along that aisle where we know for sure that we are going to bear fruits. Because before, what we're doing is that we're saying, Lord, I want you to give me the strength to go to soul winning. Lord, I want you to give me the strength to serve a church. Lord, I want you to give me the strength to be able to pray for my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I want to be able to do all those things. And in fact, that we are doing. I look at these young people as they stand up here today and uh, listen to Pastor Doug as he said that while he was on his way going into Florida or something like that, he knew that they were practicing. It means therefore that they are putting themselves in a position where eventually they are going to bear fruit. Yeah. Right. Huh? Right. And so, but he said, I found none. I found none. So the dresser of the field the one who is taking care of all things. He said, as we try to establish our subject matter, what we're going to preach on tonight, he said, give it, he said, let it alone this year. In other words, what he's saying, he's saying, just give me one year. With my experience, with my ability, with what I know, I am capable of the dresser. He said, if you give me one more year. In other words, he's saying, give me one more and I believe. I'll get this tree to start bearing fruit. Good. He's asking for one more year. And that is our subject tonight. Lord, give me one more year. Wouldn't you love the Lord to give you one more year? Yeah. I believe that there are people, they are probably businessmen throughout this world, length and breadth of America and other places, they wish that they could just get one more year so that they could revive their business, they could get things going. One more year. Yeah. As a child of God, wouldn't you say, Lord, if you could just give me one more year that I can do something for your honor and for your glory. God, give me one more year. A young person probably said, listen, Lord, just give me one more year so that I can find myself to learn to play the music. I can be able to do something. I can serve in this church. Lord, just give me one more year. A grandparent might be saying, Lord, give me one more year in this life that I can spend with my grandchildren. A mother might be saying, Lord, in a hospital bed looking probably facing death might be saying Lord if I could only get one more year right. I believe throughout the whole world people are wishing and begging that they could get one more year and in this passage the master Jesus the dresser of the field is saying for every one of us that are not producing how we are supposed to be producing he's saying listen why don't you turn your life over to me and give me one more year in your life a young person give me one more year in your life older person he said give me one more year and I will do something with your life huh? 
I will put you in a position where you will be a person that will be a fruit bearing Christian. Amen. Amen. Some of us may cry and say, Lord, I want you to give me meekness, which is the fruit of the Spirit, patience. I want that. That's, that's a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Yeah. Say, Lord, if you could just work on me. I, you know what? My, my edges are rough. I've just gotten saved. I just trusted Jesus. Or maybe a long time ago, but I have problems with, you know, being able to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. And you say, Lord, if God could just help me, I'm trusting God that for the rest of the year up to next year, if God could just deal with me for this next year, yeah. Yeah. I could be a son fruit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I could be able to bear some fruit. Yeah. Amen. Wouldn't you want God, wouldn't you like to ask God for one yeah. more year? Yeah. Huh? Amen. Starting from now to next year, wouldn't you be able to say, Lord, the different ministries that I'm involved in, Lord, I want to see, I want to see more fruit yeah. in the next year. I want that when the next year comes that there is more fruit. Friend, I don't know about you, but I look forward sometimes to going to churches or coming to America when I could be able to stand in the pulpit and say, listen, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do for God. And that year comes around and I could be able to stand and say, listen, this is what I have done for the honor, for the glory of God with God giving me the privilege. It's a privilege to be in God's ministry. Amen? That, you know, be able to bear fruit for his honor and for his glory. And so, he said in verse number 8, and he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. He's saying one more year. Just for one more year. I know you came three years looking and you found none. But one more. How many times God has come through the doors of Emmanuel Baptist Church looking for individuals, looking, hoping that they would have been, uh, they would have bared fruit for the past year and found none. But thank God for Jesus, his merciful grace. Amen? The only reason why you and I are here tonight is because the, the dresser of the field said, listen, I'm going to give him one more year. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm going to give him one more year. Oh, many people could have, they could have died. They could have gone to hell. But listen, the dresser, Jesus, his marvelous grace was extended to us. And he gave us one more year. Yeah. Amen. Just one more year. Yeah. Amen? One more year more year. I heard uh, Pastor Dean, Scott Dean was preaching down at the Jubilee and he was making mention of a man that he had to go and see and he said the first time he go and look, see that man, of course when he entered the house the man pulled a shotgun at him and he said he left there and he said I would never return back to this house. And one night one of his deacons called and said listen I need to go and see so and so and he said well, he's not, you know when he realized it was the same man and he said man I'm not going into that house he said and eventually he found himself in the house and uh, he prayed with that man and that man trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior and while he was on his way back home by the time he reached home he got a call from that man's wife and the man was dead. Wow. Huh? That man was dead. Wow. Friend, just one more year. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Wouldn't you ask God for that? Wouldn't you like to say, God, just give me one more? Yeah. You look at you look at you pass by the cemeteries and you see all this grave. I bet you, I, I could guarantee you. I, I believe probably about ninety nine percent of the people uh, that that are lying in those graves that we used to know would say, I wish I had. One more year. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. One more year. Let's look in verse number six. As we probably, see if we, make, we probably make two points, uh, given our time and everything of like that. In verse number six, the Bible says, He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. As we said, the vineyard is a type of the church. Yeah. And if we look at, first of all, we see the placement of the fig tree. Yeah. The fig tree is not growing wild, no. yeah. but it is in a vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. What is so special about the vineyard? In that vineyard, there is a dresser. Yeah. There, there, it can, in other words, that fig tree can be given attention. Yeah. Aren't you glad that you're part of a fundamental Bible-believing, independent yeah. Baptist yeah. church? Yeah. Where people can look out for you. A man of God can look out for you. Where people can pray for you, can share your requests. Thank God for the family of the church. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Thank God for the vineyard of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 
where a man can stand up and he can rock back, he can get his face, I mean, just pink and he can swell up and boy, he can preach God's word and you can leave here being filled, being filled with the spirit of God, being filled and motivated to go out and to do what you got to do, not only to go out and just to do it, but of course to be able to apply things in your life. Thank God for the vineyard of the church. His placement of that fig tree. It is in a vineyard where it gets attention. And in that vineyard, is not the, this fig tree is not the only fig tree. That's why he says, this fig tree. Yeah. There are others that are wrong. And they are producing. Yeah. Ben, yeah. They are producing and stuff like that. And so you are able to look at what others are doing. Those who are growing up, get, you know, as young people, they can see others, what they're doing and say, you know what, man, I want to be like that. I could never forget when I was in church as a young teenager. And I used to look at my pastor just standing up there and preach. And, uh, you know, I look at him and I say, man, I could do that. I believe I could do that, you know. And uh, right after church, I would sit down and I would write down every, every, every sermon that he preached. I would write it down, take all the points. And then I had a few cousins. It was about six or seven of them. And as soon as I reached over, I said, listen, church time. And I lined them up and boy, I tell you what, I sit down there and I, and I pick up that paper and I preach. To them, I do, the, I do the song leading, I do the preaching, I do the altar call, I open in prayer and I close in prayer. It was a one-man show. But man, I tell you what, you know, I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God that I was able to look at others. And I found myself in a position where God said, listen, I want to use you so you can bear some fruit. Amen. I thank God the year came when I started to bear those fruit. Amen. And so the placement, I thank God for the church. Had it not been for the church, I would not have been who I am today. Thank God for the church. Thank God for the church. And so not only that I consider the placement, we'll skip a few points and then we'll, we'll go down to verse uh, let's take verse number 7. The Bible says, Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. And from none, from, from none, sorry, cut it down. He said, cut it down. Why, why cumber it with the ground? I mean, we could plant something else there, and it would be, and that's human logic. You know, that's how we, as a human being, that's how we, we would think. But I tell you what, I thank God for Jesus, as I said earlier, and for his grace. He said, listen, oh, I know it probably don't worth anything. I know this tree probably deserves to go to hell. Oh, I know it deserves to die and to remove from there. But I'll tell you what, just leave it alone. And I'll deal with it. Amen? Yeah. And that was, that was me and that was you. Right. So just, just one more year. One more year. But I'll tell you what, the day came when you probably step into a church or somebody came and they knocked your door and boy, you trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. Amen? Yeah. Thank God for his amazing grace. Yeah. Amen? His amazing grace. Yeah. But let's consider not only the position of it, uh, you know, the placement of it, but also let's consider here the purging or the preparation of it, sorry, the preparation of it. He said, listen, I'm going to prepare this tree. I'm going to prepare this fig tree to produce. And the preparation process, look here in verse number eight, he said, and he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Till I shall dig about it and dung it. So he said, I'll tell you what, listen, I'm going to prepare this tree. I'm going to put in all my skills, all my effort to see that this tree bear fruit. Yes. He's preparing. And you know, growing up, of course, in, the, in Grenada and the Caribbean, you would see a lot of farmers sometimes. And uh, a lot of people who do that sometimes when they, have, they got a tree, uh, you know, close to the, a fruit tree or something like that. And sometimes, and I'm sure they do the same thing, that's, I guess that method is applied in every part of the world. I, I don't want to go ahead of myself and say that that's the way you do it over here. I, I don't know, but I would imagine that that would be a general principle. And oftentimes what they would do is that they would cut some branches. They would, they would, they would prune yeah. that tree. Right. Cut off some excess Branches. And I'm trying to say here today is that if we are a fig tree and we're not bearing, uh -oh. hey, I tell you what, listen, young people, I believe that there are some things in our lives that we need to cut out. Yeah, right. 
we need to start pruning yeah. some things. There probably maybe too much, uh, too much of Facebook. There probably too much of social media. There probably too much of this in people's lives. Too much of pornography. Too much, of, you know, just too much of the world. And so often, so much of the world needs to be cut out. And if we were just only to cut out some of these excess things in the world, I could guarantee you that we are going to be a fruit because we are going to find the time to go to soul winning. Yeah. We are going to find the time to talk to our neighbors about Christ. We're going to find the time to do what we got to do for the honor and for the glory of God. Amen? Yeah. If we were to consider and realize that God is more important than everything else, whether it's sports or whatever, hey, and if God is tugging your heart to do his will and to come into the ministry, all you got to do is to prune that life of yours and cut some things off that is in making you just clogged up and you cannot bear. Right. God wants to prepare you. Yeah. Good. Oh, he wants to prepare you yeah. so that you and I can produce. Yeah. And the master is saying, the dresser of the field is saying, listen, just give me one year and I'll cut all these things out. Can you agree and say, listen, whatever is hamburging me from giving my best to God, Lord, I'm asking for one year. If you could just give me one more year, yeah. by this time next year, I should get rid of those things. I should be able to have things under control. One more year. Not two. Not three. But just one more. As a teenager going to school, can you just make that commitment and say, listen, just give me one more year. Parent, can you say, listen, Lord, give me one more year to get my life straight and so that I can be able to guide my children in the way that they're supposed to and to make them, to put them on a path where they are going to be successful. Yeah. One more year. Yeah. Amen. Is that too much to ask? Not one day, not one month, but one year to revolutionize things. One more. One more so that I could be who God really wants me to be. I believe that there are people that are needing one more year. I'm satisfied with one more year, Lord, that I can do more. I can't wait until the next year roll around for the next year to roll around when I can be able to do, you know, to go ahead and to do things what I want to do for the honor and for the glory of God. Amen? One more. Yeah. yeah, to get rid of some things. He said, I'll, I'll dig around it. He said, I'll dung it. And he said, if he doesn't bear, well. He said, if it bear, well. And if it doesn't, then I'll cut it down. Yeah. But what I do know is that every one of us have the, the potential to bear. Right, right. See? Yes, sir. And the dresser knows that. And he said, listen, just give me one more year. From my experience, whenever those things happen, I'll get things in order. Yeah. I'll get things where it's supposed to be. I'll put every mechanism in place. And I'm sure that at the end of that year, it will be right in place. Yeah. But can you make sure that that is going to happen to you? Can you say, listen, I'm going to start from now. I'm going to say, Lord, use me. Help me. Give me that one more year, Lord, that I can be able to achieve what I'm yeah. going after. Yeah. One more Good, year. I believe that the point has been made. Maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior tonight, listen, say, Lord, I want to trust you. And Lord, give me one more year. Yeah. Or maybe, probably you face that and you have not trusted Jesus Christ and God has given you one more year. Maybe that year might up today, or it might up tomorrow. We don't know when it's going to up, but you have been given that year. Won't you bear fruits? For his honor and for his glory? One more year. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. We honor you. And Lord, I pray, God, may you just continue, Lord, to guide us, protect us, open up our eyes. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. Lord, we want to give you all the glory. Yes. And may the hands of God just continue, Lord, to bless us and guide us. Bless the rest of the meeting, the rest of the invitation. We ask this in Jesus' name.
Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.